Hey, welcome back to the fanciest channel on YouTube. No, I'm kidding. Hello, YouTube. How's it going? Get here again. And as I've seen everywhere, you guys definitely want to hear more about decorators. And I know we've shown command line interfaces before um, and, and Python. So I'll try to keep it a little bit more in line with the theme that we had before. And I'm going to be using Python to teach you more about decorators. Now, if we're going to talk about decorators, I'm going to talk about cooking. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be worth it in the end. So let's make a directory here on for decorators. Decorators. Although I'm not going to save anything. You're going to see it. So decorators. So let's open that on Visual Studio Code. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to just start implementing something for cooking. I know. If you, if you don't know how to cook, don't worry about it. You don't have to know it. It's just so you understand um, how decorators actually work. I think the example might make sense to you. So bear with me, please. <laughs> so I'm going to just change here to language, Python. And in Python, I'm going to start implementing what I would do to, you know, I don't know, cook rice. So define a function, cook rice. And to cook rice, um, you know, or any other function that you might create, you would, you know, um, do something here really. But as an example, I'm going to just print stuff that I would do. So I would um, go to the kitchen, go to the kitchen. I would uh, pick up the ingredients. If I can type, I would, um, say get because then you can translate that later to get you know connection strings or whatever for your database um, <laughs> get the equipments and that will be you know your dishes your cutlery uh, and then let's get cooking right so you would you know um, wash the rice um, you would add the rice to a pan with water, yada, yada, yada. So this is, this is the actual cooking rice. I'm not, I'm no cook. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to screw that up. Uh, I'll, I'll link uh, links on how to cook rice in, in the end, if you guys are curious about it. <laughs> and in the end, you would have to clean up. So, you know, you have to, you know, wash the dishes. Now, this is how you would cook rice, right? So if you call out this function and instead of saving a file here, I'm going to make a, a reference to the Python kernel in here. This is the, I can talk about notebooks later on. If, if you guys want to know, just let me know in down in comments. Um, and trust me, it's not going to take two months. <laughs> um, so if you I just connect to my Python kernel, kernel here, it's going to define the cook rice method, uh, sorry, function. And if I just call it out here, cook rice, now it is going to, you know, print all the, all the stuff to, you know, cook rice. Now let's go back here and let's now cook an egg. Cook egg. So now let's, let's think about that. What, what would we do to cook an egg? Probably something along the lines of this thing here, right? So let's copy those over. Let's pick everything up. Uh, we have to wash the dishes later. And of course, now we just, you know, um, warm, oops, sorry, warm frying pan, warm, no, heat oil in a frying pan. Um, then you would crack an egg, print, crack an egg in a container. Never crack on the, on the on the frying pan. You never know what happens to, to the egg. There, there we go. And you know, other stuff to you know, cook an egg or fry an egg, right? Let's just put. There we go. All right. So now, if we call it out, and I'm just gonna call both of of them here. Cook an egg and cook rice. Rice. Come on. There we go. Now, if I, if I try to run this, you will see that, you know, I go to the kitchen, get ingredients, blah, 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 hit the frying pan, wash the dishes. So that's for the egg. And here for the rice, same thing, and wash the dishes. 
As you can see, there's a lot of code that I'm not, you know, reusing. I'm just actually repeating it all. Um, so that's definitely not good code practices, right? Um, so the first thing that might come to your head, and um, I apologize for, for everybody else that is already thinking about classes. Um, we're talking about decorators here today. <laughs> and you, you're you gonna have to, you know, probably refactor this into a function and it's gonna be your prep function. So let's just do prep function, prep function. So whenever you need to prepare something, you're gonna do those actions, right? Which is great. So let's just call that out here. Uh huh. Prep for preparation and cleanup for you know washing the dishes and the whole thing, right? So now what we have here are two functions that are reusable. So whenever we need to change something about our preparation, about our cleanup, let's say we buy a dishwasher, we don't have to wash it by, them by hand. Something like that, I we just go into one place and it's reused on the other functions. Still though, you're still calling out preparation and cleanup on, on both sides, but you know, still works. So I just ran it again, it works the same way. So now, hey Guy, this is not as fancy, you know, as the other stuff that, you, uh, that I wanna do. Um, how would I make it fancier? So you were calling functions inside of a function to do something, right? What if I create a cooking function and I receive a recipe and what I do here, I do a preparation. I do, I do all the steps on my recipe and then I do cleanup. See what I did there? And now let's try that out. So let's, instead of, you know, cook rice, do the prep in the cooking of the rice, Right, I'm gonna treat that as a recipe only, um, and the cleanups as well. And now, instead of just calling out cooking egg like this, I will pass it along in the cooking class, cooking function. Sorry about that. And same thing for the rice. Cooking, cook rice. I know the name of the functions are, are terrible. I'll probably name that to a recipe of rice but you, you get the gist of it. And now if I call them back again, guess what? It does exactly the same thing. So now I have a function that, that receives a function and calls that function out. You guys are mighty close to a decorator now. So now it is kind of cumbersome to call a function, passing it along a function to do something, right? So what if I define something, this is really cool. So what if I define here a cooking recipe function, right? And this cooking recipe function does the preparation, does the recipe, and does the cleanup. And I return, return said function, cooking recipe. Now, whenever I define the cooking of a recipe, it just returns a proper recipe. So if I do a cooking of egg, I can actually do cooking egg function here. And what I can do now, I'm just gonna forget about the rice for now. I can actually co call cooking an, e an egg, cooking an egg, because it becomes a function. And it's gonna do the same things for function, for, for, the, for the, co the cooking function, uh, that for the egg recipe, right? So heating the oil in the frying pan and everything. So what it does here is just returns that function to me. Well, guess what? We have just created a decorator. So all we need to do now, instead of just doing this crazy syntax here, we just have to pass it along as a decorator here. Cooking for the cook egg. And now if I call cook egg again, I am able to just receive everything. So whenever you, you pass along this decorator, all that's happening here really it defines a higher function that uses the cook egg function that is defined as a, as a child function and returns it all as a one global function. Oh my God, I've said function so many times. I'm gonna count that out later. Uh, <laughs> so all I'm doing here is, is just returning something that is wrapped 
uh, has wrapped that, that feature for us. Now, you're probably asking yourself, Guy, why would I use decorators? Why, why would I not use classes? And in all honesty, is, is it, it depends on your um, fr framework and the style that you're, that you're, you're, um, you're programming with, depends on your team and expertise, multiple ways. But I, I feel they, they're great to, you know, simplify how things look because you can actually reuse that in a functional programming way to all sorts of functions that might not be used in the same class. Now, even better, um, you can do some really fun stuff. Let's say, oh, um, right now I know I'm cooking an egg here and everything, but I wanted to decorate it better. So let's say I want to cook rice as well and I want to cook both of them. Um, and if I call now both functions, let's say cook rice. Come on. Now they're going to be all messed up together. What I can do is actually just create a doc string here. This is something that I do all, quite often when I create decorators, right? I use the doc string to actually decorate whatever I'm doing. So recipe for rice. And let's do recipe for egg here. And there's a function called under doc not a function, sorry, a um, property of a function that is the under doc that accesses this value. And what I can do here is actually just print that documentation of that recipe. So I can do recipe dunder doc. So now whenever I run something using the cooking method, if, if it doesn't, if, uh, I can know for a fact what it's doing. So I know exactly how, what am I doing um, and which function I'm using. So if I wanted, I could actually um, call out here the, the name of the function. You know, possibilities are infinite. <laughs> you can do pretty much all you want here. Uh, it's just your creativity, it, it was sky's the limit. Sorry, not creativity, you guys are creative. Um, and this is how you use decorators. So today we just shown by cooking that you can create a decorator to, you know, um, do all the functions that you would do for for um, for cleaning up, for preparing your your, um, your recipes. Now you're probably asking my, me, hey Guy, but okay, that's great for print statements, but how can I use this in the in the wild, right? In my work. Um, so you would probably use the here, and this is exactly why I use prep and cleanup. These are preparation and cleanup functions. You're probably thinking about, you know, connections to a database. Um, you can you can think about um, maybe cleaning up a, a data before processing it. So if you're doing any modeling of data for, you know, data analysis, you might want to, you know, do some lexical preparations to the text beforehand. Sky's the limit. And there it is. This, these are decorators. Let me know how, how you guys like it in the comments, please. Uh, please subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and I'll try to keep you guys uh, posted with more videos. Thank you, everyone. Have a great one. See ya.